Good day, grade 3 learners. Welcome to our lesson for Science 3, Quarter 3, Week 3, Day 2. Our topic for today is Measuring Movement Using Hand Span and Foot Span. Before we begin, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thank you! Activating Prior Knowledge How far did the ball move? The possible answers are, it moves very far, it moves a short distance, it reaches the end of the room, it reaches the edge of the table. What can we do to ensure that everyone agrees on the same answer? Is there a way or a tool we can use to know exactly how far it went? The possible answers are, by using measuring tools like a ruler, meter stick, or tape measure. Another answer is, by using our hands and feet to measure how far it moved. So, how can we all agree on how far the ball moved? The answer is, by measuring how far the ball moved from its original position. Lesson Purpose Intention One way to determine how far an object moves is by measuring the change in its position. We can do this in many ways. In today's lesson, you will measure the distance an object travels using your hands and feet. Lesson Language Practice Hand span is the distance from the tip of the thumb to the tip of the little finger when your hand is stretched as wide as possible. Foot span is the length of your foot from the heel to the tip of your longest toe. Remind the learners to keep their papers with their hand and foot span measurement for future use. Reading the key idea stem. Activity 2. How far did it go? Measuring distance using my hands and feet. In this activity, the learners will measure how far object moves using the hand span and foot span. Developing understanding of the key idea stem. Activity 2. How far did it go? Measuring distance using my hands and feet. Number 1. Divide the class into 5 or 6 groups. Number 2. Distribute the activity sheets and explain the procedure of the activity. Number 3. Note to facilitators for the activity. Assist the learners in joining two manila sheets of paper. If there is no available toy car, any object that can be moved will do. Clarify how long a hand span and a foot span are. Assist the learners in measuring the distance the car traveled, instructing them to only consider whole hand span and to disregard any remaining length that is less than a full hand span. After the learners finish the activity, process their answer and facilitate the discussion. Guide question. Are the hand span measurements of all members the same? If not, why do they differ? The answer is no. The hand span measurements for each member are different. Each person has a different size of hands. So, they may have different hand span measurement. Are the foot span measurement of the other member the same? If not, why do they differ? The answer is no. 
the foot style measurements of each member are different. Each person has a different size of feet, so they may have different foot span measurements. Defining understanding of the key idea stem. Why do we still use hand and foot spans for measure how far an object traveled? The possible answers are because we don't have rulers all the time. It's quick and easy to use our hands or feet to measure distance. Our hands and feet are always with us. We don't need to find a measuring tool to measure distance. Hand spans and foot spans are useful for initial, quick, and accessible quantitative descriptions of distance. It is applicable to use the non-standard units of measurement to measure an object's change in position. Why or why not? The possible answer is Yes, if you don't have a ruler, measuring tape, or measuring stick. Yes, if I use the same hand, foot for all my measurement. No, because my hand and foot is different from your hand and foot. Processing their answers, acknowledge the validity of both yes and no answers based on the context. Guide them toward understanding that non-standard units are convenient for quick estimates but lack consistency and accuracy. Reinforce the idea that for things to be the same for everyone, we need standards.